Thanks for joining us. I'm Joey Chen. Youth athletics creates some great memories and opportunities for kids. More than 50 million are involved in youth sports in this country. And for most, relationships with their coaches are good ones. But as we've seen tragically often, the close connection between a young player and a coach can be exploited. America Tonight's Lori Jane Gleha now investigates how abusers can take advantage of young athletes and how they get away with it. I mean, it seemed like I could never say anything about it, otherwise I would be a lot worse off than I already was. You know, it was kind of keep quiet or that's kind of it for your career. A career in baseball is all Anthony Calero ever wanted. He spent his childhood dreaming of the big leagues and put his trust into the coach who helped him perfect his pitch along the way, a man named Spiro Lempesis. I thought he was going to help me get to where I wanted to be in life and with baseball and everything like that. And that was, I thought baseball was my out. Um, and he kind of took that all away from me. It wasn't long into his college career at Concordia University when Calero's close relationship with the coach crossed a line. In a lawsuit filed against the coach and the university late last year, Calero claims Lempesis asked the 20-year-old to perform sex acts on camera in the coach's campus office. In exchange, Calero says Lempesis promised him meetings with baseball scouts. It got to the point of, you know, he said you can do these videos and everything like that and you know if you do these videos I'll I'll help you really get to where you're going and he said you can either do this for me and and you'll be good here and you know you'll play baseball and I'll get you to where you're going or if you don't then things are going to go really sour for you. Why didn't you tell anybody? How do you tell someone that? I mean how that's I'm so embarrassed by it. How do you tell someone you, you had to go through, had to do that, you know? How do you go about that without feeling like low or like just a piece of dirt? Lempesis, who agreed to speak with America tonight, admits he made the sex videos. I regret it because um, it shouldn't have happened. I, I'm, I'm the coach. Uh, it, 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 you know, some people will say I used undue influence. Um, I don't think so. I know his lawsuits say that I promised him all these things and, and forced him into it, which is a complete lie. Lempesis's career as a college coach came to an abrupt end when another player came forward to say that Lempesis asked him to make videos too. But Calero claims there's more to the story, that Lempesis groomed him from the time he was a child and that the university should have known the man they hired had a history of getting too close to kids. He doesn't have a criminal history pertaining to any sort of sexual assault. What do you think they would have found if they had done an additional checking on this guy? I think they would have found that he wasn't the type of person that should have been in a position of power. He was failed by a university that was supposed to be there to protect him and make sure that he was safeguarded and, and kept safe from the coaches who actually were predators. Antonio Romanucci is Calero's lawyer. When Anthony was a minor, Spiro was there recruiting him to come as a baseball player to Concordia. He would shadow him, he would take care of him, he would give him pitching lessons. Calero says he first met Spiro Lempesis when he was 10 years old at a baseball camp sponsored by Concordia University. Over the years, the coach kept in touch with him, attending his games and offering free pitching lessons. He would text me or call me and stuff and ask me to do the lessons. He'd ask me to hang out. He would, you know, for, you know he'd ask me about my girlfriends. He'd ask me, you know, about stuff I was doing sexually. Calero says he recently started to remember inappropriate encounters with Lempesis in high school. His lawsuit alleges the baseball coach showered with him and touched him inappropriately. He said he was going to get me a pair of sliding shorts, so he had me fully undress in front of him. Um, and, you know, he got down on the floor on his knees and had me step into them and, and pulled them up and was fondling me and checking everything out and whatnot and had his hands all over my genitals and everything. He says I was inappropriate with him in high school, but yet he'll come to Concordia. Who would do that? If you were abused by somebody at, in high school, would you go play for them? We talked to him, and he's sitting there with tears streaming down his cheeks. It's a nice show, isn't it? His, his argument is, I felt like I was under Spiro's power because he was the coach. I had to do what he wanted me to do. Please, really? 
I didn't have control really? is what he's, really? that's his argument. Really? I mean, come on. I mean, if I had such control. Do you control, see that argument though? Do you see why? No, not at all. I don't see it at all. Calero is not the only person charging that Lempestis has a history of sexual abuse of minors. I've looked him in the eye and I think he thinks what he has done is, is perfectly okay. Attorney Karen Enright represents a man named Adam Kelly, who claims he too has uncovered repressed childhood memories of abuse at the hands of Lempestis, who was a teacher in his middle school. He's accused of taking him to a mobile home and um, orally and anally raping him on numerous occasions, uh, taking him, um, uh, staying overnight at his house, these sexual acts of violence in his house. He's also accused of videotaping it. Kelly declined to speak to America tonight, but he's filed a federal lawsuit against Lempesis, claiming that the coach raped him a dozen times, often with other men. He too is suing the school district that employed Lempesis. A healthy coach and athlete relationship would be one that is based on mutual trust. What begins to become problematic is if that relationship starts to change into more of a power and control relationship that becomes coercive, that becomes intimidating. Shar Rivet, executive director of the Chicago Children's Advocacy Center, says most cases are never reported to authorities. How easy is it for an abusive coach to blend in as a caring coach? I think it's extremely easy. There's a reluctance to actually report it because of a fear of upsetting parents, um, a fear of false reporting. I don't think there's really a desire for children to be hurt. I don't think that's where the motivation is coming from. I think there's a motivation, though, to kind of pull in and protect the organization. Lempesis maintains he's guilty of nothing more than poor judgment. I sleep well because I know I'm innocent. If I was guilty, it'd be pretty rough. I don't even know what I would do or think or say. I'm not in jail anywhere. I'm not locked up. Because why? Because I've not done these things that these people are accusing me of. But he told America Tonight his close relationships with kids throughout his career could be misconstrued. He says he sometimes spent the night at children's homes when their parents were traveling. He attended concerts with players. And a mother once caught him wrestling alone at her home with her teen son. She walked in on it, fully clothed, nothing inappropriate, just walked in on it and said, what's going on here? And then she was obviously unhappy about it yeah. and uh, did send a letter to the superintendent and to the principal. And I had my meeting with them. We talked about it, um, said, yeah, it's not a good idea to be alone with an individual while the parents aren't there. Do you think everything you did as a coach was appropriate? Was everything was appropriate? Yeah. Define what you mean by appropriate. Do you think the way that you hung out with some of these kids, do you think those were appropriate behaviors for a coach-player relationship? I think 99% of it is appropriate. Lempesis also admitted to monitoring the boys' showers when he taught PE at a middle school. He says he was instructed to make sure the kids were out within six minutes. It would just be that I was in the locker room at the time, that they were happened to be showering and getting dressed and getting out. Is it ever appropriate for a coach to be watching children in a shower? No. When you start crossing that line into personal behavior that could be misconstrued even into sexual behavior, to me those are warning signs that a coach is going too far. If, if a coach or a youth serving person is starting to go down that road, perhaps it's innocent. But that's where you can really intervene and say, you know what, that's not, that's a line that you don't want to cross. Calero's lawsuit takes aim at Concordia University for failing to do enough to protect him from Lempesis. Concordia would not speak to America Tonight on camera, but the school says it fired Lempesis as soon as it learned of any inappropriate behavior. Still, administrators never explained to the student body why Lempesis was fired until two years later when police arrested the coach for having sexual relations in the backseat of a car with a 16-year-old boy. Concordia should have announced to everybody that Spiro Lempesis was a sexual predator, that he was somebody that either could or might continue to harm children. Lempesis says the boy lied to him about his age, saying he was 19. Police agreed and never filed charges. I have no future, uh, and, and to do anything I, I do to love. And some people would say, well, good, you shouldn't be around kids anymore. Um, which I can understand how people might have that perspective from what they read and what they think and believe, which none of it's true. Uh, and unfortunately, with today's social media, that's what's out there, and I can't change that. 
What's this one like to look at? Um, not as fun as the other one. Anthony Calero says his future isn't what he expected it would be either. He never made it to the big leagues. He works at a catering service now, but he isn't giving up hope that he can put all of the bad memories behind him and one day become a coach himself. I don't think it's, it would be ever over for me. You know, I really love baseball that much. I don't want to carry this around with me anymore. So I want to just get it done and over with and, and have some peace and resolution and move on with my life. America Tonight's Lori Jane Gleha joins us. You know, this, with all these co kinds of complaints and very specific accusations, it has not resulted in any criminal charges? At this point, there are no current criminal charges against Spiro Lempesis, and he will say over and over again he did not do any of these things. He thinks that some of the allegations against him are so far-fetched, so he is fighting these things. But, you know, a school's hands can be tied a little bit uh, when it comes to tracing a coach in general. Um, if, a co if a school feels uncomfortable with a coach, they might decide to part ways with that person. But if someone calls them down the line checking references, if they've never filed an actual police report or there's never been an arrest or there's never been any sort of charges, the school cannot say that legally to another school district to let them know why they felt uncomfortable with that coach. So it can be difficult in general to follow a questionable coach or somebody that has some red flags that have been raised along the way from school to school to school. So that case is understandable that the schools would feel their hands are tied, but is there any other way to protect kids? Yeah, well actually a lot of states have expanded their laws, especially since the Jerry Sandusky scandal happened. States in particular Illinois is one of them that expanded their mandatory reporting requirements, the people who are required to report suspected sexual abuse to Child and Family Services, and now included among those are universities, people who work at universities, and also people who work uh, in an athletic capacity, uh, if they're a coach or something like that, and if they work in a, a community organization that has to do with athletics as well. America Tonight's Laura Jane Gleha.